Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Bob Ender. Thank you, uh, Intan. Lovely Intan does not need an image to introduce myself. I'm going to be using some images. And Harold, I hope you agree with the red color of my ties. <laughs> because being Dutch, I should be wearing an orange tie. But today I learned it's orange is associated with prisoners. <laughs> okay. So thank you for this invitation. And a quick introduction who I am. Now you know I'm Dutch. I was born in Holland in 1962, which makes me a tiger. And I'm still happily married to the same woman. She's from Morocco. Her favorite color is green. And together we have uh, three children. We had them in two years. Now you can ask yourself, how did we do that? Well, we, we had twins, a boy and a girl, and then our third one. My hobbies are a bit in sports. I like, I love tennis, I love running, and I have two other passions. One is photography, obviously, if you work for Canon, and the other one is traveling. So career-wise, as you know, I started in Holland, my country of birth. I moved to a headquarters where I was responsible for the Canon OEM products in a company called OSE, a Dutch company. And because I was working at the headquarters, my ambition was to go abroad. So when the headquarters asked me, would I like to go to Malaysia a few years ago, I said, oh yes, please. So I actually spent four years in your lovely country. Then Ose wanted me to go to Belgium, which was also a lovely experience. But then came the opportunity to go to Japan. And uh, of course, I didn't want to miss out on that opportunity. Lived in Japan with the family for four years. Then moved to Switzerland because the company I worked for, Ose, got acquired by Canon. And Switzerland was the first country to integrate, so they asked me to be part of the integration. With my background of Canon and Japan, they thought I would be the perfect fit to help with the integration. So I was back in Europe, and then very recently, I got the opportunity to come back to Asia again, so third time. Not Malaysia, but in a country with a climate that's very similar to, a to Malaysia, and food simil very similar to Malaysia. So I'm now working in Singapore for Canon and responsible for South and Southeast Asia. Okay, and today I have the opportunity to talk a little bit about color, but I'm definitely not the expert you were listening to a few minutes ago. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about the power of image and also some of the opportunities we see for the graphic arts industry. So. First, I think the average age here is maybe about 25, 30, right? So, if we look back at 20 to 30 years, we've seen a huge development in digital information, the digital revolution. If you look at today, and I've seen some of you on Facebook, um, this device that we're working with today and our tablets and the services we get in, in the cloud and apps that we can order taxis with just an app. What we're using today was 20 years ago unimaginable. The new products and services we have today. And if you look a little bit back, you will see products here that probably all of you remember. A roll of film, it's gone. Yellow pages, we don't use them anymore. Typewriters, it's gone. Music cassettes. Remember the music cassettes? Don't use them anymore. So we've had a huge impact in the so-called digital revolution. And of course, this has also impacted our personal and our business lives. So let's look at a few of these major developments. Now, one of them is the device that I think all of you have, a mobile connected device. Today, there are 2 billion people using mobile connected devices, and all these people are connected around the world. 24 hours a day, 
and from the re most remote places in the world. So can you imagine the power of this device that we're all carrying with us and we're very attached to? One of the powers it's given us is the power to communicate very fast. Today, you can send a message to your wife, your boss, your kids on the other side of the world and it will reach its exact destination within a fraction of a second. Can you imagine that poor pigeon, how long it would have taken that poor pigeon to do the same thing if it ever reached its destination? Another effect of this mobile device is the number of images we are now taking and saving. By next year, it's predicted that all of us put together, we're going to be saving more than three trillion images. And then we also have videos that we're taking. So a huge quantity of images and videos that we're taking, sharing, and some companies, some new companies are doing very good business because of this. Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube. But you know, all these images need to be stored. So remember the bookshelves? Well, they were limited in storage. We then had digital, and we had those first tapes. Maybe some of you remember the tapes on the, on the mainframes. They were very slow, very big, and very limited in capacity. And then we went to floppy disks, and then the CDs. And today, we can save our digital information in the cloud. So we've seen a huge development in digital storage. Then there's another major development besides the mobile device, and that's social media. Facebook, LinkedIn. Maybe many of you have Facebook. There are currently more than 500 million Facebook users, and I saw one of them here sitting in front of me on Facebook. <laughs> 500 million users are checking their Facebook page on a daily basis. So on a personal level, Facebook, it allows us to share photos, videos, stories with our colleagues, with our friends, with our family. But Facebook is also used to influence public opinion. So today, we have a dentist from Minnesota who's in hiding because of social media. We've also had companies that had to take off products from the shelves because of social media. And we've even had governments toppled because of social media. So, over the last 10 to 20 years, so our lifetime, we've seen huge developments in, because of the digital revolution. So I think we're living all in very exciting times. Now, the question is, what is the impact on the graphic arts industry? Of course, the graphic arts industry is also hugely impacted by these developments. And now the question is going to be, do we see it as a threat or an opportunity? I think it's both. And let me explain to you why. If you go back again to social media, we've seen that social media and texting platforms they enable us to communicate very fast, very cheap, and very targeted. But social media also has some risks. Now, if I am a dentist, or I am a celebrity, and I go to Africa, and I shoot a famous lion, or I shoot a giraffe, and that photo of mine appears on Facebook, I better consider it twice before doing that. And also, if you're an employee and you're friends with your boss on Facebook and you're putting images of yourself drunk every evening with your friends, <laughs> you may want to consider what kind of image you're creating to your boss. Or if you're a company, you may want to consider carefully the image user groups are making of your company or your products. So there are definitely risks with social media. But it's at the same time an opportunity. Because companies and individuals, they need advice on what type of image do they want to give
to the outside world? And what platform do you want to use to communicate your message? And to who? Another development we've seen is the huge, the very fast development of digital storage. So we have all sorts of tools to store our di digital information. Floppy disks, hard disks, uh, CDs and, and cloud. But do we know the risks of digital storage? Do people know that your hard disks, your flash drives, your, your CDs all have a limited lifetime? Do people remember what happened to their images in Friendster? Friendster in 2010 changed business model, went into gaming, 2011 offline, all the images were gone. Do we realize what risk we have if confidential, personal or business information is stolen or made public? Like some Swiss banks recently, governments were brought into embarrassment and even some celebrities were embarrassed by information that was stolen and made public. So there's a risk, but there's also an opportunity. Companies need advice on what type of information they're going to st store, how they're going to structure this information, and what information they want to make public, and what information they need to highly secure. So there's a big opportunity there. So what about traditional print? Printing on paper. You know, I've been in this industry for quite some time now, and I remember more than 20 years ago, people were saying, oh, papers, no, no, we're going to have paperless office, everything is going to be paperless. Well, today it still isn't. I personally believe paper will not disappear. And just take one example. Wouldn't you be pleasantly surprised if one of your friends was on holiday and sent you a personal handwritten postcard instead of an SMS? You'd be really surprised, right? So print has value. Print has something that digital information doesn't have. You can touch it, you can feel it. But on top of that, you don't need power or an internet connection to view it. And there's one more thing, print is going to last longer than my lifetime. And I have a personal experience in this. At home I have family photos from the 1800s more than 120 years old. And when you see the quality of this photo, it is still really good. And I can still view it every day. Family photos. In 1987, I made a trip through Africa. And of course, I took a lot of photographs. I put them on a Kodak CD. 1987. Today, I cannot read them anymore. So, printed information still has a lot of value. But we have to adapt printed information. We have to use more color. We have to use more images. We have to make it faster. We have to make it available online. We have to maybe think about using images to communicate an important message faster. And maybe we should consider not printing on traditional A4, but printing on different sizes, larger sizes, smaller sizes, round sizes. Maybe not printing on paper, but printing on wood or plastic to get that message across. Another thing we have to consider is when we have very important messages, let's take a personal, very personal event, a marriage or a birthday. What do we want to do with those images, the very precious personal images? We want to print them in the highest quality, with the highest quality media and with the highest quality print. The same if we want to sell luxury products, yachts, luxury watches, condominiums. We want to use very high quality images on very high quality media in the highest quality print. So, I hope you agree with me that the changes, technological changes that are taking place are both a risk and an opportunity. A risk for graphic cards if you don't take them seriously. An opportunity if you take them seriously and you adapt your business. Now one example is 
a bit of a local example, the Straits Times. They've been around for more than 100 years printing newspapers. If you look at their newspaper today, they've, they add color, they add images, they've increased their quality, they've increased their printing speed. The newspaper printing is now much faster. But what they've also done, their newspaper or their news is now available online. And they get money for it, they charge for it. And it's also available mobile, on your smartphone or your tablet. So the Straits Times has improved their traditional printing and at the same time they've adapted to new media. Another example in the graphic arts is Amazon. Amazon.com is actually a very new player in the graphic arts industry, only 11 years old. Today they are one of the biggest on-demand book printers in the world. And what they've done is very simple. They've made it very easy for people to order a book online, it's printed on demand. There's no stock of books. The moment an order is placed, it's printed, it's finished, it's packaged, and it's sent. And you have the book within a few days. By the way, Amazon is one of our biggest professional print customers. So, I hope you're all convinced that change can bring huge opportunity for the graphic arts industry. And if you're still not convinced, I'm going to go back way further in time than any of you here, I think. I'm going back 15,000 years to Europe. Because so far today, the first human images that were made were found in Europe in a cave in France, estimated to be 18,000 years old. The images that were taken at that time were very time-consuming to make. They were not very high quality, but they used color. And they were n these images were not very mobile. <laughs> Today, you can take high-quality images, and I've, I'm happy because I've seen many Canon cameras here. You can take very high-quality image of practically anything, from distant stars to the insides of human beings. And we can also print on practically anything in high quality, from paper to airplanes, from billboards to skateboards, and from tiles to t-shirts. And you know what? The printing industry today, worldwide, represents trillions and trillions of dollars or ringgits worth of business. The imaging and printing business is huge today. Much, much bigger than 15,000 years ago. So, my advice to the graphic arts industry is embrace change. Don't be afraid of change. Change is an opportunity. And at the same time, your traditional printing still has value. But please modernize it. Use more color, use more image, use less text. An image shows much more than a thousand words. The Chinese have used it for many years, right? So change and understand how information is created, how it's shared, and how it has to be secured. And with this information, with all this knowledge you have, you can adapt your business, add value to your business, you can add value to your customer's business, and you will do really well. And you know what? We at Canon, we would gladly share our knowledge of imaging and of digital printing together with you. Teddy Makasi, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Oh, I had a thank you. A thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Ender, once again, big round of applause.